Hello and welcome back. Dear learners, in this series we have talked about the origin of the Russian language, its structure and nature. We have also discussed about the Russian alphabet. As you already know that in Russian alphabet we have 33 letters. We have talked about consonants and vowels in it. We have seen that how these consonants and vowels are pronounced. With the help of various words and expressions, we have seen that how in a sentence they express particular meaning. We have also seen the usage of verbs in Russian. As you know that these verbs are identified by their endings and accordingly they are conjugated. We have also seen the usage of personal pronouns, possessive pronouns and demonstrative pronouns in Russian. We have also discussed about the usage of counting in Russian. Days of the week and months of the year have also been discussed with a few examples. As now we are venturing into the Russian grammar part, we are discussing with a few examples of the nominative case and prepositional case. As we have been making sentences in nominative cases as well as in the prepositional case. So far we have also discussed about the verbs of motion in Russian. We have taken initially two sets of these verbs like ichi khajich and yekhaj and yezjij. We have also seen the usage of several verbs like chitaj, gavrich, skazaj, vaspaminaj, dumaj, etc. We have also seen how they are being conjugated. Now, as we have been discussing in the previous lessons about the usage of a kom and a chom. As you already know that in Russian we have two categories like the animate and inanimate. And accordingly we use a kom and a chom. They are directly related to questions like kto and shto which means who and what. Now, since we have been discussing about the usage of noun endings in Russian in this particular case called the preposition case. In this series, now we will be discussing more about the endings of the adjectives. Since in the previous sessions, we have seen that how the adjective endings and noun endings they qualify with each other. As you very well know that in Russian we have three genders. They are masculine, feminine and the neuter. And according to their endings, we have seen that how these nouns and adjectives are being changed when they are placed with questions like gijie and akom and achom. Now, we will be discussing more about the usage of achom and akom in this series. Dear learners, as now you remember that in Russian we have masculine, feminine and neuter genders and in prepositional case they are being classified as per the usage of shto and kto, especially when they are used with questions like achom and akom. Accordingly, we differentiate between these nouns depending upon the nature whether they are animate or inanimate. For example, for animate cases in masculine gender, we have used certain nouns like brat, achets, drug, etc. Whereas, for inanimate case, we have used certain nouns like universichet, zavod, etc. Accordingly, as you know that in Russian, in masculine gender, there are several nouns which ends with soft sign. And as per the rules, we know that in place of preposition, we place a when we talk about achom and akom. The soft sign has been dropped and we place ye instead. Ya dumayu a part failure. For example, we can use such examples here. Accordingly, for feminine gender also, we have akom and achom. Padruga, sestra, mama, babushka, etc. can be used with akom. Ya gavriu a padruge. And accordingly, there is a huge number of such nouns which belongs to the achom category or inanimate, like fabrica, auditoria, biblioteca, etc. But the rules remain same. It entirely depends upon the ending of the adjective and ending of the noun. 
how they qualify with each other as we have seen in the case of Gijia. The only difference is that in the questions where it is used with Gijia, we place a preposition like va and na, which means in, at or on depending upon the context, whereas in questions which is used with achyom and nakom, we place a, ab and abo. A is placed with all such nouns, whereas ab is used with such nouns which used start with a vowel like ab university cheche, ab antone, ab inne, ab institute, etc. Whereas abo is only used with abominia, which is a personal pronoun like we have just learned in the last lesson. Now, in this lesson, we will be taking up this with a few more examples. We will be discussing about the personal pronouns, possessive pronouns, demonstrative pronouns with a few examples. As we already know that in Russian, we have personal pronouns like ya, ty, ona, na, my, we, and ani. Accordingly, according to this case, we have abominye, achibye, anyom, anye, anas, avas, and anik. To understand this in a more precise manner, please pay attention to the slide till we discuss this. Please pay attention to the usage of words and expressions as well as the placement of a and ob. Here in the possessive pronouns like we already know that we have moitoi, nashwash, ivo, iyo and ik as well as we also use svoi, svaya, svayo and svai in Russian. Here we have given you a list of kto and shto depending upon these nouns whether they are animate or inanimate. Accordingly, they have been changed into a kom and achyom. First example is moi drug. It has been changed into a mayom drugia. Accordingly, moi gorad has been changed into a mayom drugia or a mayom goradia. Here we have used the example of kto and shto. That is why we have used a noun for kto drug, whereas we have used a noun gorad for shto. And if you pay attention to the usage of the possessive pronoun here with a verb, let us choose dumach. Ya dumayu a swayom druge, ya dumayu a druge, ya dumayu a swayom gorajya or ya dumayu a gorajya simply. But the main importance is that when we use these examples, we need to remember that these questions must be asked starting with akum and achyom as in the case of druk and gorad. Let me give you a few more examples of these such as ya dumayu or ya gavaryu a druge, ya dumayu a brate, but ya dumayu a batse because it is starting with a vowel o, achiets. Accordingly, if a question is asked with achyom, I must use ya dumayu a dome, achyom ya dumayu, ya dumayu ab Universi cheche. Achomya dumayu, ya dumayu, abantone. So, in this case, you can use all such nouns depending upon whether they belong to the animate or the inanimate group. Let us look at the slide once again and understand how these other examples are being used. Tvoi brat, a tvayom brate, tvoi dom, a tvayom dome. Here again we have used two examples with nouns brat and dom. If you pay attention to the noun it belongs to brat belongs to the animate whereas dom belongs to the inanimate that is why they are used with questions a kom and achyom. Ya gavryu a brate whereas ya dumayu a dome the question would be a kom ya dumayu, ya dumayu a brate, 
Я думаю об отце. Я думаю о преподавателе. So, these kind of examples can be used with о ком. But, о чем я думаю? Я думаю о городе. Я думаю о заводе. So, these kinds of masculine gender nouns will be changed with the usage of мой, твой, наш, ваш, ик. So, that you can actually use them with these provisional pronouns in Russian. Я думаю о моем брате. Я думаю о моем заводе. So, these kind of possessive pronouns can be placed before the usage of о ком and о чем. Let's understand in a more precise manner with the rest of the examples. Наш сосед о нашем соседе. Наш музей о нашем музее. Here, as you know the rules, наш, which ends with ш, that is why when it is converted in the ачом and ашчом, it changes into нашем. That is why we have used two examples, сосед or музей. Я думаю о своем соседе, which is an animate. Accordingly, for inanimate, we have used the noun музей. Я думаю о музей. It is asked with question о чем. Let us pay attention to the next example, so that we can understand how to use ваш. Ваш отец о вашем отце. Ваш институт о вашем институте. Here, if you remember that whenever a noun which is starting with a vowel, it would be used with ab. But here we are using the possessive pronoun ваш, ваш отец and ваш институт. Accordingly, я думаю о вашем отце. Я говорю о вашем институте. They will be asked with question, о ком вы думаете? Я думаю о вашем отце. And о чем вы говорите? Я говорю о вашем институте. So, please remember, whenever we are using these possessive pronouns in Russian, we always keep in mind when to change these possessive pronouns from мой, моем, твой, твоем, наш, нашим, ваш, вашим. But it is again depending upon the gender of the noun. Like in the case of брат, друг, отец, институт, университет, etc. Let us understand the remaining possessive pronouns being used in this case. Please pay attention to the slide once again. Here we have given a few more examples of Yivo Yo and Ik. As you already know that Yivo means his, Yo means her and Ik means there. So, accordingly, Ya Dumayu Ayivo Atse, Ya Dumayu Ayo Atse. They will be changed accordingly. Whereas, we have taken two such examples, Sistra and Stasia. Ayivo Sistre, Ayo Sistre, when it is asked with question Akom. Whereas, when it is asked with Sto or Achom, we use an inanimate example such as Stachia in this case. Ya Gavriu a Yo Stachie. Ya Raskazivayu a Yo Stachie. Accordingly, here if you pay attention that we have used certain verbs like Gavrich, Dumach, Vaspaminach, Raskazivach, etc. These are the verbs which are often used in this case. Dumach, Rasgavarivach, Raskazivach, Vaspaminach, etc. You also know that how to conjugate these verbs. They are entirely depending upon their endings. And of course, in Russian, as we know, that there are a few exceptions too. But to understand and learn them, we will be having a dedicated session of such verbs 
how to conjugate them and what are the techniques to remember them. And when and how these verbs are being used from case to case. In possessive pronouns as we know that moi, toi, ta, shwash, yivo, yivo, ik are being used. Let us pay attention to the ik now and understand with an example. Here we have given an example ik uchi chilnatsa and ik fabrika with kto and shto. When uchi chilnitsa and fabrika used with possessive pronoun ik when in a question asked as akom and achom. We can use them with such verbs like ya dumayu abik uchi chilnitsa. Whereas, we can use ya gavriu abik fabrikia. Here ik as we use in personal pronouns for they has been changed into abik because ik starts with a vowel e. That is why as per the rules which are known to us as we have discussed about them in the previous sessions too, the same will apply. Ya dumayu abik fabrikia. Ya raskazivayu abik pripada vachilnitse. So, these kind of examples will help you exactly how to use and when to use these expressions in your day to day communication in Russian. Dear learners, as you know very well that in Russian we again have another example of soy which means one's own. Soy dom, one's own house or home changes into soya, soyo and soy according to the usage. For example, we have used chei, chia, chio and chi for whose, soy, soya, soyo and soy has been using with the possessive pronouns in Russian. And accordingly, we will see how soy, soya, soyo and soy is used in Russian with possessive pronouns in this particular case called the prepositional. Please pay attention to this slide and see that how these soy, soya, soyo and soy are being used. As before that we know that neuter gender are also qualifies as the masculine gender and the changes are more or less same. Let us take a few examples before we go to the next section of soy, soya, soyo and soy. We have mayo, toyo, nashe, vashe, yivo, yo and ik. Accordingly, they are changed with a mayom apshejiti, a toyom pisme, a nashem pole and a vashem slavye. If we take two more examples of neuter gender like akno and zdani, they will be changed with yivo, yo and ik as a yivo, aknye, a yo, akne and abik zdani. So, dear learners, you can also use these neuter gender nouns with the possessive pronouns in Russian such as moi, toi, nash, vash, yivo, yo, ik, but they will be changed if asked in neuter gender as mayo, toyo, nashe, vashe, yivo, yo will remain same and ik remain also same. Let us now go to the next section as we have been talking about the usage of soy. Please pay attention to the slide. Here soy has been used as one's own. Accordingly, we have used certain examples like soy brat which means one's own brother and soy kabinet which means one's own study or office. As you already know that in this series we have been using the sequence of kto and shto. That is why the first one belongs to kto. That is why the noun has been used as brat. Soy brat. A chom vi rasgavari vaiche. Ya rasgavari vayu a swayom kabineche. If it is an inanimate, we can place a question a kom vi dumaiche. Ya dumayu a swayom brache. So, you can also use 
when to use achyomanakom for animate as in this case we have used brat as well as we have used kabinet for achyom. Achyom vi gavri che ya gavriu a swayom kabinet che whereas akom vi rasgavari vai che ya rasgavari vai a swayom brat che. You can replace this with Atiet, Drug, Papa, Prepadavachil, etc. and use them according to the rules which you have learned in the previous lessons. Let us go to the next slide and understand the usage of Yivo, Iyo and Ik. Here again we have using the nouns of feminine gender first like Swaya Sistra, Swaya Mama, Swaya Kwarchira and Swaya Auditoria. These are the examples of Akom and Achyom. Let us look at the first example Swaya Sistra and accordingly Soi has been changed because Sistra belongs to the feminine gender. Akom Vidumaiche Ya Dumayu Aswaye Sistre. Accordingly, for inanimate or achyom, we can use soya kwarchira. Achyom vi rasgavari vai che, ya rasgavari vayu a swaye kwarchire. Here you have seen that the endings of the noun are changing according to the rules we have learned when we talked about the question gijie in the preposition case. We have also seen that how they are being changed right now, but the only difference is that presently we are using the possessive pronouns moi, tvoi, nash, vaj, yivo, yivo and ik and accordingly we are also using svoi and as you know svoi means one's own. Now we will be discussing the usage of svoi in the neuter gender. Here we have few examples like swayopismo because here neuter gender as we know that it belongs to the neuter things which do not fall into the animate category that is why we have used a noun pismo. Here swayopismo is changing as a swayompismie ya raskajuam a swayompismie or ya gavriu a swayompismie. You can use these kind of verbs while talking about such neuter gender nouns in usage with possessive pronouns like soy. Dear learners, you must remember that although yivo, yo and ik are possessive pronouns, they remain unchanged while answering the question akum or achyom. For example, yivo drug will remain yivo druge when used with a. It will become ya dumayu a yivo druge, ya raskazivayu a yo knige and ya dumayu a big pismye. Accordingly, when we use an expression about oneself, we use a sibye. On lyubit raskazivach a sibye. So, accordingly here we have seen the usage of soy, soya, swayo and swai. For plural we already know that we use ik. That is why according to the gender of the noun we always use these possessive nouns in a correct and efficient manner with the examples of these nouns as per their genders. And since we have talked about the usage of adjective endings and noun endings they also change accordingly. Dear learners, as we have learned about the personal pronouns and possessive pronouns, we will be discussing more about the demonstrative pronouns etc. in the next section. And before we go to the next section, let us repeat a few fundamental rules which we have learned in this lesson. As you already know that personal pronouns in Russian such as ya, tu, on, ana, ano, mui, vui, ani are being changed into abominie, achibye, anneom, 
a nie, a nas, a was and a nik are used. They are used more oftenly with examples where verbs like do much, rasga varivach, gavarich, vaspaminach are used. So, accordingly you can also make your own sentences and use them with such nouns and adjectives depending upon their genders. And do not forget to use the rules applied which we have learned during the earlier lessons as well as during this lesson. For masculine gender, for feminine gender and for neuter gender, we have seen that by placing a before that the noun changes accordingly as we have seen during the usage of gijem a druge, but when we are using the adjective endings they are a coin changing ya dumayu aswayom kharoshem druge. So, here we have used a possessive pronoun soi, whereas we have also used an adjective kharoshi, soi has been changed into swayom kharoshem druge. Accordingly, you can also use these adjectives when used with feminine gender or neuter gender. Ya dumayu a swaye kharoshe padruge and for neuter gender as you know that there are such nouns which belongs to only this gender that is why we need to only use inanimate nouns. Ya dumayu a krasnam more. So, with this we will conclude this session and we will be discussing more about the usage of such pronouns in our next lesson. Thank you.